about a year and a half ago, Amory Lovins came to me and we started talking about the idea that we could look at this question of oil dependence in a way that was different. In the past, when people have looked at this, they always thought of this as a problem of government policy. We've got to get the government to change a bunch of things, and that's going to fix everything. Well, there are some things we need to fix. Government certainly can make changes to make regulations more consistent and so on, but business and civil society, as well as military organizations in the society, actually should have a very important role in any transition away from oil. To make things happen on a wide scale, business is critical. You have to make it worthwhile financially for things to happen. Leaders in the biggest companies who are affected by this, everyone who I know who I've talked to about this at that level, everyone that Amory has talked to recognizes this as a big picture strategic problem for their company. This is a, if, if they don't recognize it, they're not paying attention. We can start to think about ways to innovate and revitalize our technologies and our economy. And this, in our view, is going to be cheaper, it's going to be safer, it's going to be sure, and this is, this is our focus. There are things you can do that are total no-brainers, that you look at them and you say, this isn't going to cost very much, this is going to save us a lot, and it's going to reduce our dependence. If we were to decide as a society that we wanted to make these changes, there's a set of efficiency savings and, uh, and other options that we could get to relatively easily and relatively quickly. If you really talk about a uh, mobilization case where you fund the R&D, you fund the uh, policies and the, the various initiatives to get these technologies onto the market aggressively, then you can talk about some very serious reductions in oil use. And, so, and if it were a goal, a strategic goal of the United States, there are options available that will allow us to get a long way and this is a world that has lower business risk for the companies that really that depend on fuel. This is a world where we're insulated from what happens to the price of oil. We're not totally insulated from it, but there's, there's a huge difference between a world in which we are a monopsony buyer of oil, we're competing with the Chinese and the Indians to buy oil, and a world in which we're breaking the back of OPEC. The conventional wisdom technology we're talking about uh, something on the order of 20 to 25 percent savings with technology we know already how to do. For a true game changer, you're going to have to do this kind of redesigning using the different materials. And there's, there's, there's the potential there for a big shift in how this industry operates. And it may happen in the way we're describing, or it may happen because the Chinese decide to get serious, and or Toyota decides to get serious. Full implementation of state-of-the-art technologies gets about half. You're able to save about half of the oil projected to be used in 2025. The big picture lesson is there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot you can do. If you're looking at the longer term, ultimately you know, there's a transition to some new set of energy sources. And many people have talked about hydrogen. There are problems with that. But there's going to have to be a different infrastructure. And whether it's biofuels or hydrogen or something else, there's going to have to be big investments Ultimately, we as a society have a choice. We have to decide whether we want to continue to live with the uncertainty and the external costs associated with being dependent on oil, having large military fleets whose, or, whose job it is essentially to protect the Persian Gulf. That costs money. It costs a lot of money. We have a choice to make. We can decide to move on a path that will allow us to reduce those costs, those business risks that I talked about of oil price fluctuations, reduce the cost of having to have such a large standing military for these sorts of purposes, reduce the, the, the cost associated with pollution from consumption of those fuels. We can choose to do that. If we're going to make this happen, the transition actually, I believe, will have to be led by business.